Hi, everyone, and welcome. Here we go again, more fun and more inspiration. I have with us today um, a transformational coach and yoga teacher. Her name is Ezra B. Ogut. She has helped people worldwide discover their power to live the life they choose. Today, she helps people transform their lives to experience their own spiritual and financial abundance through one-on-one -on -one coaching and workshops. Individuals, self celebrities, and corporations have all sought out her services and mentorship. She is also the author of this fantastic book, Money Does Grow on Trees, and I <laughs> enjoyed it so much, Ezra. I loved it. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I, so I, yeah. Well, I want to welcome you and say thank you for joining us. Excited for this great chat. I, I would like to ask right off the bat, what in, inspired you to write your book? That's always well, number one, Hawaii inspired it. <laughs> because to, you know, being here is kind of like a writer's heaven. You know, you have so much quiet, you have so much nature. I think it's it activates creativity quite a bit as a land. Um, but more so than that, you know, we're not so much doing the individual coaching anymore because we kind of don't have time for it. But we started a great program after like years of doing individuals. And by we, I mean me and my husband, we work together. We're, you know, he's my beloved. We're business partners and we do everything together. We're together from 7 a.m. in the morning till midnight every day. And um, <clears throat> we came up with, uh, you know, so many people around us that had gone, you know, that had done the individual coaching or had come to the uh, workshops, you know, they were all demanding to be able to do coaching. And we realized that, and we were kind of never into setting up a coaching program, um, but we realized there's so many coaching programs there that are just like, I don't know, four weeks, two weeks, the weekend, and you know, having walked our path, we know that true transformation is not possible that fast, <laughs> that quick. So we set up a certification program and it was so successful and just seeing, and it lasts for a year and a bit. So it's kind of like, almost like a school and just seeing all the jumps people had in their lives, whether it was with relationships or setting up a new business or healing relationship with parents this that the other thing it was such an inspiration that i i felt like you know what we're doing this in turkish at this point only um and i i just want to get you know these exercises these you know pinpoints to the degree it's possible but in a book out there so that the people who cannot work with us who cannot maybe come to the certification or that don't speak Turkish <laughs> can actually have access, you know, and an inspiration to the journeys of other people. And, you know, my intention with this book really is to open the sense of more possibilities yeah. in, in the minds of people when they read like that, you know, when that happens, I'm the happiest person on planet. Yes, yes. And one thing you said in the book, have a goal, a vision, a dream, I know that just made me go, wow, yes, I, you know, I have my visions, my goals, my dreams. I'm going to give them even more time. I'm going to remind myself. I'm going to take the time to think about them on a regular basis. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I just believe and have come to experience and to know that all of us, we are such powerful creators. And really we create our own realities, whether we're kind of aware of it or not, or whether we like the result or not. So as the powerful creators that we are, you know, instead of just like kind of falling into this pattern in life where it's like, oh, all these tasks that we need to do, blah, blah, blah. Like sometimes just to get out of, outside of our own boxes, outside of our own limitations. When we can like hook up to something that really inspires us and begin to almost like taking care of a plant you know we begin to water it every day every day every day there's like a kind of an energetic momentum that begins to 
you know, play itself out. It begins to, the momentum just gets larger. It's like an avalanche, you know, at the beginning, it's just maybe a little tiny ball of, you know, snow. And then the more you kind of turn that momentum through the attention you give with feelings, through the intention setting, through just experiencing the vision as if it's already happened, you just see again and again that, oh my God, this is what I was thinking and this is what I was wanting and here it is now. And to just experience that on a tangible level, I think really wakes up us up to the fact that, oh my God, yes, I am a very powerful creator. Yes, yes. And that's what I love. Oh, and something else you said, make a new being choice. Please tell us what is becoming a new being and making a new being choice. Well, I think we've been so trained, all of us, like conditioned to this path of, you know, do, have, be. Like go to school, you know, get good grades and then be successful. Or like in the Turkish culture for a lot of women, it's like, you know, find, find a husband, get married and then be secure, you know? So we've been pushed to the sense of like, oh, first do, and through the doing, 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 you will, you know, have, and then you will be what you want to be. But in co-creation, it doesn't work that way. And I think all of us have experienced that. I mean, I went to a really good school, I got good grades, and then I struggled a lot in terms of success and, you know, finances. So the real formula is be, do, have. Who are you being in relationship to what it is that you're engaging yourself with? And I got this the most through discovering my own limitations about prosperity. I always was struggling with prosperity. It was always hard to pay rent. I, I, it was just a problem all the time. And I would just complain, try to do my best. I would be successful in things I tried or did, but I just couldn't manifest prosperity, period. <laughs> it's always a struggle to even pay rent. And there was a moment in time, and at, at that point, I didn't realize that was called a being choice. That's a term coined by my own mentor, Daryl Rutherford. But without realizing, because we all have that power, I made a being choice to be prosperous. I was so fed up with struggling. I even remember that moment where I just like got up in front of the living room and I said, you know, I will no longer belong to money problems. From now on, I am choosing to belong to prosperity. And it's not just a brain thing. It's not a wishing or wanting or hoping. It's as if like you just make such a, almost a decision with all your cells about who you're going to be in relationship to that subject from that point of from that point in time and when you make a powerful being choice like that the whole trajectory of your reality changes mm -hmm. things begin happening things that were not happening before begin to happen because the universe is like a mirror it reflects who we're choosing to be oh, yes that is so true Oh, Ezra, it is because it's what we're putting out there. It's going to give back to us. I mean, we can think of it like looking in the mirror, you know, in the morning when we wake up, if we're smiling at the mirror, we're going to see a smiling face back. But if we get up and we're all like stressed out and we're, I don't know, cursing at the mirror, well, it's going to curse back. And we get that on, on the level of looking at a mirror Yet when we're, you know, living our lives, and I still do that sometimes <laughs> myself, you know, we're being one way and then we expect life, you know, to reflect something totally different. Mm -hmm. So if we're being in this kind of, you know, consciousness of complaining and lack and, oh my God, I don't have, and, oh, this is a problem, that's the problem, or let's say the victim psychology, well, the life is going to reflect exactly that because we're that powerful not because we're doing anything wrong but because yeah. we're that powerful yes and it is possible to tap into our creative power we all have that within us don't don't we most definitely i mean i th i think you know we are a part of the creator individualizing the here and now 
playing this game called life. And within that, we're very precisely creating our own realities. Uh, once I made that being choice to belong to prosperity, the next thing that happened was within a couple of days, you know, my mentor showed up that was going to kind of help me with the steps that came after. So I love the saying, when the student is ready, the teacher shows up. I like to say, when we are ready, the universe shows up and it's always without a beat. Yeah. And in my coaching with him, there I was like all this time up into my mid thirties, like struggling with money, complaining about not having it, this and that. And it was very scary. It was sometimes it would be scary. Sometimes it would be stressful. And there were many times I thought like, oh my God, I'm never going to get out of this. And in my very, very first session with him, he made me see how lack of prosperity was a choice of mine to begin with. And it came from a decision I made, and I, I won't get into the story here, it's in the book, but I made a decision about money as a seven-year-old through what was going on around me. And I just came to the conclusion that, oh, in life, people either follow the way of love or they follow the way of money. And I'm going to belong to the way of love. You see in the spiritual circles as well, there's this you know, pattern going on as well. Like, oh, if I'm going to be a spiritual person, then I got to you know, reject the prosperity. Now, if we believe that, that's exactly what we experience. If we choose out of believing that, then we get to experience something different. So in his confrontation of me, there were twofold. Actually, I had two levels of belief one was that, and the other was um, having watched a lot of Turkish movies, you know, the theme was always the good guys are the poor ones and the bad guys are always the rich ones. So, you know, as a child growing up, I'm like, oh, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be rich and bad. Mm. I'm going to be pure and poor. <laughs> and it's like, through his confrontation, I got it how up into almost my mid thirties, I had the seven-year-old's decision oh. and belief about money that was managing my money life. Yes. And I woke up to like, oh my God, this is ridiculous. I don't want a seven-year-old's conclusion about, you know, prosperity to be leading my life anymore. And then from there, you know, went very quickly together with my husband. He had different codes, but we were kind of working on it, you know, together and in a very, very short time, you know, we went from, he was a waiter. I was like selling shoes, you know, trying to just make ends meet in a very, very short time. We went, you know, we had a wonderful business of our own, our own over a million dollars, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, something is a tragedy. And then when you get out of the box, it becomes a comedy. I had a good laugh as to how successfully <laughs> I made myself suffer about that subject matter and realize that all along it had been a choice. So once you came to this realization, what were some of the steps you took to make that change, to change that habit of thinking or that mindset? What were some of the steps you, you took to do that? Well, first of all, you know, the being choice by itself is, is, is a very, very powerful tool because immediately after I decided I'm not belonging to this ridiculous story that love and money doesn't go together. No, one can have prosperity and can love and that's what I'm going to belong to. Already things started, you know, moving in my life. There were kind of a lot of pieces because, you know, um, in our system, the way also we learned from our mentor, he has, I think, the best definition of ego I've ever come across. And he says about the ego, ego is just kind of like a function that holds in place a belief system so that it can be experienced as a reality by us. So one of the things to realize is that it wasn't like an immediate within the next week kind of, oh, flying into success. There was still like a kind of a journey of transforming that consciousness of lack. But one of the important things to understand and that helped me have a big aha is 
that once we have a belief system set up, set up like that, the ego is very powerful in protecting that old reality. Mm -hmm. So even when you step outside of the box with a yay and an inspiration, which is very, very important, the ego is immediately going to come and do everything it can to resist. So you go back to the old. So the real transformation came from falling into a lot of those traps <laughs> first. Oh. You know? wow. um, but yeah, one was to get out of the spender's law, which took me a long time because I was, I was a, without realizing I belonged to the spender's law, which is this thing of like, you know, if you have negative belief systems around money, one of the action flows of that is that you're spending more money than coming in because in your unconscious mind you just want to get rid of the money <laughs> without okay. realizing because in essence you don't want it because so, that mindset was i don't want to be bad and wealthy <laughs> exactly like underneath you don't think you're doing it so it's like i would you know that's how the prosperity started flowing in i got out of that belief system so then all of a sudden there was more flow of prosperity but without realizing now now the next step was with you know before it even came i, I would have spent it <laughs> and then been in the same situation like oh wait just what happened why is it again hard to pay rent mm -hmm. so you know catching yourself and things like that so prosperity uh, for for prosperity consciousness getting out of the spender's law getting out of this mindset of being in debt all the time which I think, you know, America has a lot of that going on. So does Turkey, like living on credit cards, mm -hmm. spending beyond your means. And the reason it's important to create positive cash flow, no matter what your financial situation is, it immediately starts very easily and tangibly getting you on the path of, oh, there is, oh, and more is coming. And there is, instead of like, oh, I don't have, and oh, now there's this bill, what am I going to, it takes you away from the fear and begins to channel you into the, oh, there is, oh, look, there is, and look, a little bit more came. So singing that song from lack to, you know, I have, or there is, is super important. That was one thing. Yes. And the second thing was gratitude. I love gratitude. Oh, I love talking about gratitude. So, um, you know, I knew from yoga, although I hadn't yet at that time really practiced, um, I'm going to talk about this from a yoga perspective a little bit. You know, the fifth chakra is our throat chakra. And the highest ability of a good balanced fifth chakra is kind of recognizing and becoming aware of the power of our words. Oops, <laughs> I hope that's not getting in. It happens. It's all good. Anyway, uh, should I go and take care? Oh, there we go. Fine. So it's recognize the, recognizing the power of our words, how every, every word we speak is a seed that will flourish into our reality. Love that. And I knew this as a concept, but you know, knowing something and bringing it into your consciousness are, are two separate things. You can know everything there is to know, like kind of, you know, you may theoretically know how to drive a car. It doesn't mean you're gonna get to drive a car. <laughs> you just know about it. You cannot be the driver of the car necessarily. So just in the same way, I knew how powerful our words were as an information, but I hadn't practiced it. So I made this decision that every day, it was in 2007, the starting point and we made a pact with my husband to live this way for a year i was going to be grateful for five ten minutes about what is already in my life and then be start being grateful for things i would like to experience in my life as if it has already happened yes and you know that was like again one of those big big changes that allowed me to really jump in prosperity and I would just say things like, let's say at the time I was making $1,000, you know, a month uh, doing yoga, teaching yoga at the time, um, I would be like, well, I'm so grateful I'm making 1,200 or 300 uh, or more. I'm really grateful. It's coming to me. It's flowing to me in ease. And I would just like speak it and speak it and speak it, that and other things 
until I shifted my state of being inside where I would feel so from the focus, I would feel, begin to just feel as an emotion, so, so much abundance inside of me up to the point where I wouldn't even care if it happened in the real world or not. Yes. And then boom, it would happen. And I'd be like, oh my God, this is exactly what I was speaking and here it is. So that taught me two things. A, the power of our words in weaving our reality like a spider weaves her web. And B, if you want life to mirror you a certain reality, you got to first generate it inside of you. You got to feel it. You cannot have prosperity consciousness when you feel lack. You got to feel abundance first. Yes. And it's very, very (laughs) self-generatable, if that's a word. And would you say trust comes into that as well? see it and trust that it's it's not. I don't know if I want to say trust because why that can be a trap oh. because often often people confuse trap with being attached oh wow you know if you say to wow. the person oh trust 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 then what happens is that they get into this expectation it's like oh okay I'm going to do this exercise and because I do it and because I say it, it's going to happen yeah you know so if you have an attachment to it happening mm-hmm. state of attachment itself separates you from yes. it you can't have it <laughs> and like let's say too would it be maybe like i believe it's gonna happen that kind of leaves a bit of a door that it may not happen yes. where if we see it as already done it's happened i myself when i do yeah. my morning affirmations i I like to end with, so it is, so be it, it is done. Yes. And just, so you're right, because trust kind of like believe is, does kind of have that, that door there, doesn't it? Yeah, like if, if I trust, well, there's a possible, if I need to trust this, what does that at the same time saying? Oh, mm-hmm. there's a possibility I might, you know, be let down. Yeah. But when, you, when we can take the power from the outside factors and place it, that authority inside, then you're not attached. Like any state of attachment is, is a state of poverty. If we're attached to being loved, we're kind of, you know, a little poor about love. <laughs> if we're attached to that like job or that home we gotta have or whatever, well, you cannot at the same, ha, here, here it is now, it's coming through. We cannot be, we talked about the being choice and the state of being, we cannot be and attached at the same time. Mm-hmm. Two separate things. Yeah, if we're attached to being loved from the outside, well, the likelihood is that we, we haven't self-generated enough inside that there's a hunger to get it from the outside. Yeah. If we haven't generated a sense of abundance, which the state of gratefulness and kind of training your mind to be in a state of gratefulness actually causes, yeah, then we're after like, oh, is the boss gonna give me a raise? And oh my God, are like the clients gonna come? And yeah, there's this doubt because it's like as if it's in the outside and if the outside works, I'm gonna get it. No, if the inside works it. Oh, you're going to meet with it. it. <laughs> I love it. Oh, Ezra, that is just fantastic. I love it. Thank you. Oh, um, can we take a moment, please, and have you share your website, uh, where people can get a copy of Money Does Grow on Trees, all of that good stuff, please. Oh, thank you so much. Well, we just set up our U.S. website, <laughs> so it's very new and very fresh and very pretty. I think um, it's www.ikeandesranow.com. I-K-E-N-E-S-R-A-Now.com. And uh, yeah, my book is available on pre-order on Amazon. Although I've been hearing some people are getting the book. I don't know how it's happening, but I guess it is happening. The book has decided to go out (laughs) into the world. Uh, So it's money does go on trees, the myths we create and live by. I love it. I love it. With a few minutes left in the show, 
Ezra, what last words do you want to leave with all of us today? Um, what do I want to say? Let's enjoy life with the good, the bad, the ugly, and the beautiful. Because if we can take the point of view, it's all one big adventure. There's a lot of room for enjoying every single color of it. Oh, I love that. And it is one big adventure, isn't it? Yeah, my mentor would, would say that. Uh, I think maybe he was quoting somebody else, uh, Daryl Bless His Soul. Uh, you know, life is either an adventure or nothing at all, he would say. <laughs> and that would always make me feel like so courageous. I'd be like, yeah, you know, let's, let's go. Let's just do it. <laughs> let's be it. <laughs> and this is the adventure I am en envisioning. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh. You are just so awesome. So fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Paula, for having me on, on your show, for reading the book, for calling me in. I really appreciate it. This is our like kind of, uh, you know, opening up to the U.S. Yes. Um, and we're very appreciative of all the beautiful people that are like just come out of nowhere supporting us. Oh, I love it. I love it. And I'm thinking down the road, we're going to have to do another show because you have oh, a I lot would love more to share. <laughs> I would love to. You inspire us. Oh my God. Thank you, Paula. Oh, and, and to everyone listening in audio, you can watch on video at patreon.com slash Paula Vale or watch in audio or find it in the library at KMET in California. So thank you for joining us. Love, hugs, and blessings. Ezra, thank you, honey. Thank Love you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.